Hey guys, it's Caleb the Furniture Cowboy and in today's video we're going to be trying out the Wagner 3000 on furniture to see if it's worth it. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing we have to do for each piece is give it a good clean down and what we're going to use for that is simple green diluted with just a little bit of distilled water. You can use other things for this such as Dawn dish soap, but we like to use this and man look how dirty that rag was. After you do this, you're supposed to give it a good wipe down with some water. We may have forgotten that, but it's all going to turn out just fine in the end. So what I'm doing now is going in and removing all of the hardware and drawer pulls. I could have been a little more efficient by doing this at the beginning, just so I could clean everything all at once. But as you guys are going to see, it's not that huge of a deal, so we'll just go ahead and take those off. So next I'm going to go ahead and repair any loose or chipped veneer and to do that I'm going to be using Gorilla Wood Glue. I'm going to glue it down and thankfully I have my handy dandy 5 pound weight that way I don't have to manually press it with my hand. So I accidentally forgot to film this part but in this area after the wood glue had dried on this veneer I did go in with some wood filler just to level everything out. And once the wood filler had dried, I went in with a 120 grit sandpaper just to smooth everything out and get it ready for priming. So here you see me going in with an orbital sander just to scuff sand the drawer fronts. And as I was doing that, it looks like I may have noticed some spots that needed some wood filling. So I went ahead and added some wood filler and I didn't film myself sanding down the wood filler but anytime you use wood filler you do have to do that so that is what I did. So after we finished priming everything we went ahead and wrapped the drawer bodies in this painters tape plastic wrap combo just to make sure that no paint got inside the drawer or on the sides and I wouldn't recommend using this particular one because it wasn't very sticky but for now, this was all we had, and this was a super handy trick that we learned from a ray of sunlight, so be sure to go check her out. So on to the part that you guys have been waiting for. It's time for us to use our Flexio 3000, and the Flexio 3000 that we got is advertised so that you don't have to thin the paint out before spraying, but we did want to thin it out just to make sure that we would get that professional finish. So we actually bought a viscosity cup off of Amazon and we looked it up and the perfect time for the viscosity cup was 35 seconds. So we went ahead and made sure our paint was thinned out just to add to the drying time to make sure everything would level out evenly and then we were ready to paint. All right, so time for the good part. Load the paint into the gun and pull the trigger. And okay, it's not exactly that easy. There are a couple more dials and knobs on this thing that are pretty important. So the dial on the top controls how much air is being pushed through the paint gun and the little spinny dial close to the trigger controls how much paint is being released to be sprayed. For me so far, I have been trying to kind of cheat the system by not spinning down the paint dial. So I'm just letting it go crazy with the paint, but I've been getting a lot of drip marks. So don't think that you can compensate by standing further back or going faster. Don't play around with it. I would just suggest spinning down that paint dial so that not quite as much is coming out. For me, I've been keeping the air dial at a four or a five, and that's working perfectly. As soon as I pulled that trigger, I knew this was a game changer for us and that our days of rolling paint were over. This thing felt awesome to use. 
and we got insane coverage with just one coat. There is a little bit of extra paint waste with this thing compared to rolling. We're buying our paint from Home Depot for 25 bucks for a whole gallon. So honestly, not super worried about the cost of a couple extra cents of paint wasted. So once that first layer of paint is dry, we go ahead and scuff sand everything and then we flip it on its back for some reason. Um, I think this was just to make sure we got every single angle, but that's not something we do anymore because I've found that it makes the paint dry in an unpredictable way and when it's standing upright, everything is just more predictable and it just goes according to plan a little bit better. But for this time, flipping it on its back was A-OK, -okay, and I'm really happy with how the second coat of paint turned out. So now that the dresser body is all good to go and painted, the next thing we have to tackle is the hardware. So we load it up into a baggie and bring it to our bathroom, put it in the sink, give it a little wash down. And to clean this one, we actually went in with something called Bartender's Helper, uh, along with some steel wool. But after scrubbing the first one a little bit, we realized that this was gonna be a little too strong for the job. So we decided to take it back out to the garage dry it off and we ended up spray painting it with some pure gold spray paint. So we're back at the garage and we go ahead and poly the dresser, go in with that first coat of poly. We used Verithane matte finish polyurethane and we've since switched to a satin finish Verithane just because we can buy it in the gallon bulk size but we definitely wanted that matte finish on this project and we're super happy with how it turned out. And once we're done with that, we go ahead and screw in the hardware to this piece of cardboard. We found that this is just absolutely the best way to spray paint the hardware and we've seen a lot of other people do it this way so definitely give it a try if you're not already doing it that way so on to the second and final coat of poly but before you do that you want to do a quick scuff sand with basically the finest grit of sandpaper you have for us, we use 320 just to give it that nice professional finish. Alright, so we are rounding the final corner on this piece, just about done. The only thing we have left to do is figure out what we want to do with the legs. We knew we wanted to add some legs to it and we found these legs in our garage that we had ordered already and the only issue was the back corner didn't have anything to support half of the leg so I had to get some 2x4 and cut it down to size and then I just wood glued it onto that corner. Once the wood glue dried, I screwed in the leg. Super happy with how it turned out and I think it just added the exact touch that we needed to finish off this piece. All right, so thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. 
in conclusion, the Flexio 3000 is freaking awesome and we'll definitely be using it on all of our future projects and I would recommend that you give it a try. Foam rolling is definitely one way to go, but if you want to take that next step up your quality, I would 100% recommend this. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in and be sure to catch us in our next video.